believe the recording is now started. Perfect. So you should all be seeing on screen the uh, home tab of the uh, TM system. So what are we doing today? We're basically going to uh, cover the basics of planning for a UNOE scenario. So basically to uh, bring you up to speed, there's been a shopping cart uh, raised for goods. It's been approved. Uh, we have an inbound delivery document that has been generated. The packing has been performed in ECC. And now as TM planners, we are supposed to log into TM, find our DTR and freight units. And remember this from trainings that these are documents that are automatically generated as soon as the inbound delivery document is generated as well. So there's a linkage between the three. And as TM planners, we log into TM basically to understand a delivery requirement that has been generated. So that's why we're going into the system and we're searching for our DTR based on our inbound delivery document or our PO. And that will allow us to view any DTRs or freight units that are supposed to be planned or pending planning. So there's several ways to do this. But what I want to cover today is not only the process of what we're supposed to do, but also why we're doing it. OK, so basically you're all already aware of what TM is for, or if not, I'll go over the basics of it. So basically we are tracking transportation we're trying to optimize cost in terms of transportation uh, for UNOE scenarios so when goods are purchased in a shopping cart and they're transported from a vendor location to a final destination location what we're trying to do is to understand by now tracking the transportation cost how we can optimize in the future the transportation of goods either using uh, DAP INCO terms, FCA INCO terms, or XWorks INCO terms. So in the long run, we can cross-reference data that we have in terms of uh, historical data from the procurement division in terms of cost of transportation and goods and how we can optimize our transportation in the future. So basically now as a TM planner, okay, and in this case, I'm logged in as the TS01. Remember, this is the role for the TM planner for UNOE scenarios. I can look for my DTR document, basically going to the ERP logistics tab. And now if you're all following what I'm doing on screen, we have a set of three tabs. Okay, first of all, the ERP logistics integration tab will allow us to view any DTRs by searching by PO or inbound delivery document. We also have another tab known as the freight order management tab, which we will get to and use once we have generated our freight orders, which comes after our planning. And then we have our planning tab, where basically we will make use of the transportation cockpit hyperlink, where we will start the planning of our uh, freight units. So first of all, what I wanna do is to understand if the inbound delivery document that was generated from the approved PO in SRM is also displaying the documents of DTR and freight units in TM. So to do that, I'm going to go to the ERP logistics integration tab, click on the overview transportation requirements. And from our search screen, I'm going to input my inbound delivery document number. And now I have set all this up here in order to save time. Remember that you add your inbound delivery document to the original delivery field and your PO would be added to the original order field. Okay, so you can search by any of these two, whichever information you have at hand. Once you do that, make sure that there's nothing else in your fields that will, let's say, contradict what you're searching for. You can also go to the change query option here, and you'll see that there's a larger set of search fields. If we scroll down, we click on apply, and if there has been a DTR and a freight unit automatic document creation in TM, they will display below, as you can see here. Basically, just from the information we have in this search that we performed, we can already understand that we have a DTR number that is linked to an inbound delivery document. We can also see, if we keep scrolling to our right, that we have 
information on the status of these documents. We have the life cycle status, which will let us know if the document is still in planning, if it is planned, if it is completed, if it is canceled. So right from this search field, we have a lot of information. We can also see the execution status, which will give us information on if events have already been submitted for this uh, DTR or for this freight unit. So in this case, if we still have the in planning status here for life cycle, we would already uh, assume that no one has started submitting events, actually that we haven't even planned anything yet, so we don't have any freight orders. We also have information that will allow us to understand the source location, which we have here, and the destination location address. Remember this information is here because we have properly added the key integration fields in the shopping cart that will have a direct impact in TM. So if we see our source location here from the vendor, that means that we've selected the vendor from the contract catalog. The destination location was added correctly in the delivery address. And all other data that we have here, for example, the delivery date was also added correctly in the shopping cart. The plant as well is here. And we can keep uh, scrolling to the right and see a bit more information related to the quantity of goods that are being transported, even the sales group sales organization, which remember are also integration fields. So the purchasing group that we've added in our shopping cart is the one that is defining the planning and execution group in TM. And that's why as a TM planner, I am able to visualize this DTR. If I didn't have the access uh, in TM, or if the person who was raising the shopping cart did not add the proper purchasing group, I wouldn't have access to this document. It wouldn't be visible in TM. Okay, so that's just the basic information as to why I can see what I'm seeing here. And uh, I think it's actually critical for you guys to understand how one system is linked to another. Okay, remember the key integration fields in SRM have been populated correctly, and now I can see uh, the documents that I need to plan for. If you remember from the training, or if you guys weren't lucky enough to be here in Valencia, I'm sure that the LPEs in your mission have trained you very well to understand that we can go to the cockpit directly from the DTR document here by clicking on the Start Transportation Cockpit. And we can skip the uh, going to the Planning tab and going to the Transportation Cockpit itself. But I'm going to go to the Planning tab and go to the Transportation Cockpit because I believe that we need to go over the setting of the planning profile first. So now that I know that I actually have a DTR and that it hasn't been planned yet, let me go to the Planning tab, click on Transportation Cockpit, and now this new screen will display which doesn't look too good. So I see that uh, students have been practicing. Again, remember, this is the training environment. And some people have uh, set up some planning profiles, but we see that there's a lot of empty uh, spaces here. So let's set up a planning profile from scratch. But before I do, and I set up a planning profile from scratch, why am I doing this? What is the whole point of setting this properly? The point is that if you don't set up your planning profile properly, you're not going to see the freight units that you have to plan for. Now, these freight units, according to the planning profile that I'm setting up, are linked to the INCO term that was added in the shopping cart. So if I'm searching for freight units that are FCA, FOB, or DAT, I'm going to have to set up a specific planning profile. If I'm searching for DAP INCO terms, I'll have to set up another one. And if I'm searching for XWorks INCO terms, I'll have to set up another one. And then I will go to each individual planning profile to view freight units linked to those INCO terms. So let's start with setting up a planning profile for XWorks. And I'm going to do that because the scenario that I want to cover today is for that one specifically. Okay, so I've set up, I've clicked on new first. I see that I have a line here that is highlighted and I'm going to start setting up my profile. The first column that we have to focus on is the planning profile column here. And we will set up by going to the matchbox, the planning profile for a UNOE scenario. So we have three options here. If you read the description, you see that you have one for planning profile UNOE planned, which is the one we have to select. And you have two others. One that will be for the vendor delivered dummy, which is basically for the freight forwarders. 
And then you have the other one for vendor delivered, which is for the vendors. So we're setting up our first one for ZPLN UNOE, which is the correct one for the TM Planner TS01 role to view the uh, actual uh, freight units linked to a specific uh, INCO term. Now, if you see the column for freight unit selection profile here, when I set up this planning profile or this part of the planning profile for the freight unit, what I'm doing is I'm telling the system that I want to see all freight units that are linked to a specific INCO term. In this case, the XWorks INCO term is the clearest one when we're looking at the planning profiles to set up. You see that you have the XWorks forward or delivered. So I select this one and I would already have the forward or delivered a freight unit planning profile set up. I can add a description. Now, this description is strictly for you to have a, a more, let's say, ease of navigation when you're going back and forth and you know exactly what you're setting up. So in this case, I'm going to put here Brian Test X Works. OK, so I know this one is mine and I could simply save this and I would be done. Now, there's also an option to add the freight order selection planning profile as well. Now, I don't like to set this one up in the training environment because when you set this one up, what it does is that in the freight order section that we'll see right now in the cockpit, you'll see all the freight orders that have been planned already. So it may be a bit confusing when you set the freight order planning profile to the XWorks Inco term because you're going to see a long list of freight orders that have already been planned. And what I want to do is have that section blank and only see the ones that haven't been planned yet. That's why I'm leaving this one blank. All right, I would simply select this line, click on continue and move on to the transportation cockpit if I want to look at freight units for XWorks Inco term. If I want to look for another type of freight unit that is linked to an FCA, DAT, or FOB INCO term, I can do that as well. I'll set up a new planning profile and follow the same process. For the planning profile column, it's always the same selection. It's ZPLN underscore UNOE. So that one will always be the same. And now for the freight unit is where things change. Here, I would select the planning profile now for FCA, DAT, or FOB, and that one is the one called forwarder delivered. Okay, so I select this one, and I also add a description that will make it easier for me in the long run to understand what INCO terms I'm looking at here. So we have FCA, we can also write DAT, and we write FOB. So we know that this is linked to all these types of INCO terms. I can save that. And I'm pretty much done. I have my planning profile for XWorks, planning profile for FCA, DAT, and FOB. So now I'm going to look for the, since this scenario, like I said at the beginning, is, is meant for an XWorks INCO term, because that's the inbound delivery that I'm searching for. I know that because that's what I set up before I started the session. You select the line. Let's make sure that we have no default settings check marked here. So I can scroll up and down and realize that I have no other default settings selected. Now in the training environment, sometimes it doesn't really make a difference, but nonetheless, I'm going to select it. When you do select this one, that means that your planning profile will always be defaulted to this specific uh, planning profile for XWorks. Now that it's done, I can click on continue and that will take me to the transportation cockpit. Now the transportation cockpit, you guys should be familiar with it already. Let me get rid of this message here. We see that we have a very long list of freight units. Okay. We always have to look for the freight unit that we're planning link to either the inbound, the PO or the DTR that we're planning for. Uh, yes, David, you want to jump in? Sure. Okay, thank you, Brian. This is uh, David. Uh, I wanted to ask something at this point. So if any user from the ones that are attending our training, they get to this transportation cockpit and they see zero freight units, what could have happened if they have the proper access? So if they get to the cockpit and they don't see any freight unit, what could have happened? 
with regards to the with the with regards to the planning profile, right? So the planning profile is very important and it's only needed to be set up uh, the first time. But if it's not done properly, right, or if it's not done at all, they will nobody the user will not be able to see what they are uh, what they are expecting to see in the cockpit, as Brian as Brian was was saying, right? So that's why it's very important to understand that before being able to plan, as Brian was saying, the profile has to be properly set up, right? And then, for example, if we have a PO that is from, uh, F, we think of term FCA, and we arrive to the cockpit and we don't find it, what could be the reason as well if it's because of the planning profile? Maybe if you could go, go back to the planning profile. So, Sure thing. I'm going to go back to the planning profile, but I'm going to use the menu up here so you guys can see that you don't uh, strictly have to close the window and start over. You can simply go to change profile selection and we could select either any of the other profiles that we have already set up or simply go to the profile selection screen that takes you right back to the setup here. So what I'm saying that because the creation of this planning profile is absolutely critical for the implementation of TM. Once it's done, if, if it's properly done, you will not need to do this uh, often, often. But the very first time that you access to the system, and this is why we are uh, doing ramp up support, you must set it up properly. Now, if you set up the planning profile for X work, but then you want to plan an FCA uh, freight unit, you will not find it. So it can, you can get really confused if you don't set up the planning profile properly. And that's why Brian is explaining uh, one planning profile for X-Works freight units and one planning profile for the other one. That, why we are doing this and separating this into different, into different groups? Because the system will take all freight units for UNOA that have X-Works in Coterm, right? And we have another planning for profile, for example, for um, DAP as well, right? That will not have uh, to be planned, etc. So there are like three groups that Brian was explaining. And it's very important that if you are LPs, you monitor and you help your users to set it up by first time. And if you are a TM a planner, for example, you pay attention to this during this week. And if you don't know how to do it, you're, you ask for support. Because if not, you will not be able to see your freight units and you will get all confused. You will not know if it's a problem of integration, if it was not transferred to TM, uh, etc. OK, thank you, David. Good explanation. So uh, again, uh, we can't stress this enough, right? So I think you've, you've pretty much mentioned everything that we needed to talk about. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, transportation cockpit. Again, make sure that you're still selecting the X-Works in Coterm here. Continue, because now we have another issue that may arise, right? We have a set of freight units, something that has happened a lot in the training, right? It's, uh, well, I have my first freight unit up here, so basically I'm just gonna select it, plan, and I'm done. No, right, in, in a real case scenario, you wouldn't do that either. So uh, some uh, option here that is very useful for you guys, if you maximize your section for freight units here, you have a better view of what's being displayed. Okay, we have, you see here, I set this up in a way that you guys could see your original order, original delivery, which is the inbound and the freight unit. So you could always cross reference the freight unit with your inbound and your PO. Now, how is this done? Because this is also very important to understand. The planning profile has, gives you a lot of options to understand what's going on, right? So the way I set this up is I went to the icon here for personalize. And once you select it, you'll see that you have a set of columns that are available, but not displayed. So basically what I did is I searched for those here in the available columns, which are called here original order and original delivery. They weren't here before. I simply searched for them as, for example, if I wanted to search for a carrier here and you would see the options for carrier. If I want to have the carrier description, we can have that as well. Just to show you how this works, I would simply select it, move it over, and now we would have it in the displayed columns. You don't see it here automatically, so you simply scroll down 
and you select it and move it either up one spot or all the way up if that's what you want to do as well. Okay, so this is very important to look at the available columns because there are a lot of them that are very, very useful, like the order and the inbound. If you click on save, now your transportation cockpit will be uh, different. So you see the carrier description in this case, I don't have one, but nonetheless, I just wanted to show you how to uh, add your original order and inbound delivery. Now, why do I do that? Because if all I have is my inbound delivery document information, right, to search for my freight unit, and I added it here, for example, right, because I can add it in the uh, search field here, or I can simply click on the column itself, and you'll see in the display that I can customize the filter and search for my uh, inbound delivery. If I do it this way, right, where I am right now, all other freight units and inbounds and POs will disappear and I'll just have that one liner there. So there's no room for confusion. If I select it here and add my inbound in the search field, it will only be highlighted. Okay, so you could still, there's still room for mistake. Now let me search for the inbound that I have, okay, which I'm looking in another screen. And if I add it here, and I click on paste and I search for it, if it's there, you see as it is, it's simply highlighted in yellow. So I know that this inbound ending in 7-4 belongs to this PO, which is linked to this freight unit. And now I know that I'm planning the correct freight unit. All right, so we have that option. The other option would be to simply, if I get rid of this and go to the original delivery column, click on it and then customize the filter and add that inbound to the section that I have here. I simply paste it and click on OK. Look what happens now. So in this case, everything disappeared. So great, great uh, example, Brian. So let me see if I actually pasted the same one. Original delivery, let me go with uh, maybe contains, uh, sorry. And that will give me a better result. There you go. OK, so instead of is, what I did was I switched the uh, filtering options from is to contains. Okay, always a better option, uh, just in case you made a, any mistake. You will always have a sort of a result, right? An approximation. So here we go. We have now only our inbound in our freight unit that we want to plan for. Another important aspect of what we're seeing here is the fact that it's divided into two stages. Now we wonder why do we have two freight units that are duplicated if we're only planning one, we're not doing any sort of combination. All right, so let me just expand this loading column here and then the unloading column so we have a better understanding of what that is. Okay, and David, if you want to add something to what I'm about to say, just jump in. So basically, this relates to the linkage between the lanes, right? So we have a, let's say that the vendor location that we have in TM is not the same as the actual factory location in TM. So the system is telling us that we need to link the location of the vendor with the actual factory location. And then the second stage is basically the factory location, which is the data that we have in TM as our loading location to the final destination. So basically TM is telling you, you know what, you first need to link one stage from the vendor to the factory, and then the second stage would be simply from the factory to the final destination. If the loading location or the vendor location were the same as the factory location in TM, you would only have one stage here. So at some point, this occurs, that it will be divided into two stages, only when the location of the factory is not the same as the one in the vendor in TM. Anything you want to add to that, David? Yeah, basically, thank you, Brian, which is, uh, I believe is important the first time they access after the house. And we have a good advice also from Adrian, uh, recommending to set up all the profiles, the planning profiles, the first time they log in, so they can forget about it and just get on with uh, the selection. It's important that um, you review the first time that you access for the freight units that you have the these uh, locations and try and try to make sure that they are they are fine, right? Because some of them are derived from master data, and uh, yeah, so loading location and loading location the different uh, addresses, in-term locations as well, shipping address. Just, it's the first time you access, we want to make sure that the transfer 
is done properly and as expected. So please identify the columns that Brian was explaining. And if you, I think if you go with the mouse over the, the address, you will get also some information or you can simply open the free unit. But the first, these first days when you're, you are accessing by first time to TM in production, review please this Incoterm location and also the shipping address loading uh, address and unloading location as well to make sure that everything is as expected. Why is that? The, the purpose, as you know, the purpose of this TM module is to facilitate the planning, the, uh, let's say, the production of SOW, etc. So the first uh, times it's important to review that all the data is consistent so we can rely on, on, on the system to facilitate our work. Otherwise, if you don't review that and you realize later, you're going to get frustrated after your planning. So during this week, please review that the main addresses that you are normally using, they are correct. So you will feel more confident and when the system will give you the planning proposals, etc., you will you will understand that is really helping you to plan and it's really uh, saving some of your time that if you do this planning on paper would be like an nightmare and very time consuming. So two points, please review addresses, loading locations, unloading locations, incoterm locations, shipping addresses to make sure that what you had in ECC or what you had in the PO is what you see in TM and it's uh, as expected. Over to you, Brian. Okay, thank you, David, and uh, thank you, Adrian, for that remark. Yes, very important. Once you set up your profile and save it, the profile remains, okay, and you don't have to do that step anymore. You just have to do it the one first time. Okay, so basically, now that we've uh, informed you of why we would have a duplication of freight units here, we've also told you how to filter by your inbound in the transportation cockpit. Let's go back to our section here. So I'm going to minimize this screen. So we go back to having our four sections of the cockpit because I want to go through something that's also very valuable for you guys. So before I even start planning, right, if I select both of these freight units, okay, always select them both so that the planning considers both stages, right, the vendor location and then the factory location. For those of you who were in the training and those of you who are being trained in the mission, there's an option to change your layout of the page from standard to map. Okay, under the page layout option here, you see that we have tons of different layouts. We would go to the one that is for the UN map layout. We select this one. Now it seems like nothing really changes in our screen, but it does. And it basically affects this bottom section here to the right, right? Where I really wanna go in this folder is to the map tab so that this will display the map and I can have a visual of the transportation stages that I'm going to plan, right? That I'm about to plan. So TM will allow us to visualize from where it's coming to where it's going, right? From where our goods are coming from to where they're going to. We have nothing in the map as of yet because we have to do something before that, right? We go to the update map option that we only have because we changed our layout to UN map layout. We select that and we can simply go to clear map if we had any other details there previously added and selected entries, add selected entries. If we have nothing there prior to this, we can simply go to add selected entries and we would be done. Okay, just to keep it safe, we'll go to clear map and add selected entries. And when I go down to my map here, we have a nice display of where the goods are coming from and where they're going. You see we have a simple straight line here that is telling us that it's coming from a vendor somewhere in this point of the map and it's going somewhere here in uh, Africa. Okay, so we have that simple line of a one simple stage. We can click on the eye to get a closer look or we can also scroll in and zoom in to understand where it's coming from. So here we would have our, if we zoom in enough, we would realize that we have the two uh, stages from the vendor location to the factory and then from the factory to our final destination location. Okay, so this is just a simple review of something that I consider to be extremely useful when you're planning before you even begin your planning. So you already know where things are going and where things are coming from. You want to jump in, David? 
Yeah, thank you, Brian. And actually, just to insist on, on the fact that they should be using this map functionality, especially this, I mean, always, but essentially these days, because after we set up the system in, in production, there are hundreds or thousands of locations and a lot of master data that will uh, help the system to plan and to represent uh, graphically this. So once you have your freight unit in the cockpit the first time, it's very important to do this because if there is any error in the master data or something that is missing, you will identify it, you will identify it quickly. For example, if you have a vendor with, who has uh, two different uh, locations, but you know this PO is coming from a particular location in a country, once you represent that, you could easily identify that uh, this freight unit has the origin in Japan and it should be in Seoul or something. The same way with the destination, right? The destination that could be uh, derived in the case from, from the PO, from the location of the requisitioner, for example, or uh, if we are talking about an STO from the storage location, you could really easily and quickly identify the origin and destination and also confirm that they are okay. It could happen that the locations in the PO are fine, but then when you go to the system, when you go to TM, you could see this line from origin to destination that is not going from, this, from the right point. And that could be a gap in the master data. I remember when we did the training, right, Brian, that uh, we had one of the POs that was coming to Undov and then actually it was appearing in the map somewhere else because there was a small error in the, uh, let's say, coordinates of, of that uh, location. So that is very important because there could be also, mm, uh, we don't expect that, but it's it's the first time we are implementing uh, the system. So it would be good that you as user, you verify your locations and the, the map will give you a very quick way to, to do that in, in, in a glance, okay? Okay, David, thank you. Thank you, because that's definitely also very important to remember. So now that we have our freight units selected and we see that the map and the location, right, origin location, destination location is accurate, let's proceed with the planning, right? Let's go and plan some transportation for these freight units. Now, take a look at the freight order section here. It's blank because I did not in the planning profile, remember I skipped that step to add the planning profile for the freight orders. Here I would see all the planned freight orders as well that have been planned already in the past. By not adding that, let's say that planning profile in the freight orders, that's why this one is blank. Now I'm only going to see the ones that are unplanned. All right, once I'm done with the transportation proposal. So to plan transportation for the two freight units or for one freight unit, let's go and click on transportation proposals and let's see what the system displays. Now it'll always give you a maximum set by default of 20 transportation proposals. Okay, if you're not happy with any of those proposals, you could always go back and generate these proposals again. There's also options to add a larger set of proposals to view, but I think 20 is more than enough. Okay, if you see, this is what it looks like once the system launches proposals. Remember that you have them in order from 1 to 20. If we scroll down, we see that we have all the proposals with the different stages for one single freight unit. Okay, basically, if I go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that the last proposal is the 20th here. Okay, there's a way to add more proposals. We can even probably show that. I don't know if it's uh, working in the training environment, but there's a way. I know in production, when you start playing around with this, you can see it, but I think 20 is definitely more than enough. So we seem to have a lot of information here. Now, to become familiar with this information and to understand why the system is showing us these proposals, take a look first at the left section here, okay? The proposal one for the specific freight unit 97, which is the only one we're planning for, is generating four different stages. So we have to understand that the stages that are displayed here are going to be equivalent to the amount of freight orders that we're going to be receiving once we plan. So if we have four stages, we have four freight orders. If we have 10 stages, we have 10 freight orders. If we look a bit more to the right, we have the mode of transportation, 
which in this case we can interpret by the icons or we can simply read the description, whether it's by sea, truck, air, or so on. We also have our source location and destination location per stage. So we understand that stage one will be from the vendor to the factory, factory to Incheon port, Incheon port to Algiers port, and Algiers port to our final destination. So we have at least four stages that we're going to be planning for. If we keep scrolling to the right, we have our basic loading start date and unloading start date, which we can also filter by and sort by to understand if maybe some of these transportation proposals are going to be too, um, too far in the future and we're not interested in, uh, let's say, planning for those. We can scroll to the right. Now, there's something that is, seems quite simple, but it could be confusing here. You have two scroll bars. The one to the right will take you down to basically the bottom scroll bar that allows you to move to the right in the uh, transportation proposal section here. And the one a little uh, before the one to the right is the one that will allow you to see several transportation proposals. OK, so I moved over to the right so that you guys could see that we have a series of columns that will be very important if you want to filter by distance, duration, or uh, if we have also price, if I actually, if I move over a little more to the right, we have the cost of this transportation. Okay, so if you see here, freight order cost, we could always sort or filter by the freight order cost. So we have either the cheapest or most expensive first. So if I make any changes to this, if I say I wanna sort the freight order cost, in ascending order, maybe the transportation proposal one is the cheapest already, it seems like it is, but you see that the second one has already changed to five, which means that proposal five is actually cheaper than proposal two, and that's why now it's showing up first, and so on. You see proposal 11, 12, and so on. If I change now to descending, I'll have the most expensive or the one that the system considers based on its master data to be the most expensive transportation proposal, and it's actually 16. So you guys can sort by columns according to your preference, or you can also set up a basic filter by going to the define filter option here. If you click on this option, you'll have a screen that will allow you to add different filtering options if you click on the plus sign and you can select the filtering options that you're basing your search on, whether it's the amount, the carrier, city, cost, I mean, whatever option that you're interested in looking through. Normally, it could be means of transportation. If you wanna only view the ones that are by sea or the ones that are by air, again, click on contains for the next filtering option and add maybe the option by air, because that's the only one you want to see. You don't want a, this transportation to go by sea because it's going to take too long. All right. If there, the transportation proposals that are displayed contain air, you will see that. And if there's nothing here, you won't see anything. OK, so basically, let me just remove the other filtering options so that I only have one. If I click on OK and there's no options for air, you see there's no data available. I can delete the filter and go back to my previous selection. And I already understand that all the options that are displayed here are going to be transportation by sea. We can understand already just by looking at this that our main carriage is going to be the one transported by sea. It's always the one that reflects the ports, right? Whether it's an airport or a seaport, those are going to be your main carriages. So I know that stage three will be my main carriage, and that's the one I'll get to if I want to update any freight orders. But that's a bit more into the future. Okay, so let's finish our transportation proposal. Uh, David, yes? Yes, uh, Brian, thank you. A very clear explanation. So since we are, uh, the users will be testing or performing this uh, planning or generation of the planning uh, transportation proposal by first time, they could face some unexpected uh, behaviors like, for example, they could, uh, they, they is, I'm sure it's not the first time they are, uh, we are uh, transporting goods or we are bringing goods from the vendor, from a particular vendor. And I'm sure there is already a well-known route from that vendor to the, to the mission. So what could happen if once we run the proposed, the transportation proposal, we don't find what we were expecting. For example, 
we know that uh, getting to our mission through a particular port is a very good option and we don't find it in the proposal. What could be the problem? If the, transport the system is generating a transportation proposal based on the origin, destination, and a series of master data that uh, has been set up in the system. But if you know that the goods from based on your experience and because you are experts on transportation uh, planning already, if you know that goods coming from this location to this location sh could come from uh, through this particular port or through this particular location and you don't find it in the transportation proposal, hold on because probably there is something, it's a gap in the master data. And consider that we are going live with hundreds of locations. So could be that one particular location that is important for you is not yet in the system. And then the system is not generating a proposal, including that. It does not mean necessarily that it's not a good proposal. So if you expect to find something as one of the best 20 proposals and you don't find it, please contact your ramp up support hub because you might need to request the creation of master data. For example, Ryan could be one location, right? That is missing. Or it could be if you request the location to be created and the location is there, it could be not a particular location, but maybe the connections of this location to other locations. So you can advise, you can request a review of that master data because the port maybe is there, but it's not uh, the lane which connects this port with another location is missing or going through tra by track from this location to another location is not set up in the system. So my advice is, you know, right now the system will learn and will expand the proposals, but right now you know a lot already. So if you find or if you miss a particular location in this list of proposals, take note of it, ask for it, request it if it's not there. If you are missing a particular leg, for example, if you have certain, uh, let's say, goods in the proposal that go from this port, and then instead of going by track to a particular place that you know is a good option, it does not appear, ask for it, review the master data, question that maybe can it can be included and this is from the point of view of missing master data but the same way if one of the proposals that you receive from the system does not make sense for example we noticed that in the training in the training environment we saw that the system was connecting one port that was in certain ocean to a lake that was inside of a continent that is certainly impossible, even though if it's pro from port to port, to go that by sea. If you identify that and you're getting a proposal that is useless, you can also request master data change and then inform this port is not connect cannot be connected to any port. This port is only connected to these other ports that are in the same lake. So please, first time you check the proposals, review that because the purpose is not only to generate a proposal that makes sense is to fine tune the system to give you proposal that will be interesting and if you enrich the system uh, set of locations and lanes the first time you get a PO from somewhere else system will give you realistic and interesting proposals same thing if you see distance doesn't make sense if you see one of these stages whose distance it says 10,000 kilometers and you know it should be hundreds, hold on, there is something wrong. Maybe this location has not the proper coordinates. You just do in general the first time the sanity check and if you see something you don't expect, report it. If you don't find something you would expect, also report it, okay? Thank you, I think it was too long explanation, but I wanted to insist on the fact that uh, we need to really review the proposal we get from the system, not because it's important for today, but in the long run will really help the system uh, give you uh, to give you an added value. Thank you, Brian.
Actually, not not long at all. I think that you just mentioned the most important thing of of this whole session. Uh, remember what I was saying at the beginning. Uh, we're not just blindly logging into the transportation cockpit, clicking on the first freight unit, first proposal, and we're done, right? Uh, we, our job is done. The idea, I know that TM doesn't have a direct impact in finance, right? It doesn't have a direct impact in other systems. But eventually, the idea of TM is that you will optimize transportation and save on cost. If you're basically blindly just clicking on anything you find and go with, okay, and I'm accepting this route, what David just said is very important. If you realize that the proposals that we have here, which are basically based on those that you have submitted uh, when New York was requesting for your uh, basic locations, the ones that you usually use nowadays, they're the ones that should show up when you're generating transportation proposals. If they're not there, right, or if they're wrong, like David said, what you're doing is you're planning transportation that's going to cost three times as much as it should. It's going to be going through different ports that make absolutely no sense for you. So that is absolutely critical to pay attention to the the cost, the duration, the kilometers, the ports, and make sure that they're the ones that you're using daily. So absolutely. Yes, David. And then, Brian, and let me insist on something for the users. Please read, think, and analyze. This is not a transactional system. This is not AVC. I click here, I go there, I get another screen, I click here, and enter a number, I go there. You have to analyze and plan with the tool. And sometimes the tool might not give you what you expect, and then you need to understand why, so next time it gives it to you. But it might happen that there is something wrong. If you run a proposal, and all the proposals you're getting are by uh, air, what could happen? The system doesn't work. Why? I should come by sea, but I'm only getting transportation proposals based on flights. What could happen? Maybe the system is giving you proposal because the delivery date in the inbound delivery document has not been updated. And then according to the inbound delivery, you have to you will receive the goods by tomorrow or in, in three days time. So the system is saying I cannot plan anything by C if the delivery date is this one. So you might get proposals that don't make sense. Don't think the system doesn't work. Just analyze, understand. You might need to go to the inbound delivery document, cross-check with the procurement. All right, this delivery date is not uh, accurate. It's not updated. Then we update it, and then we it will get updated also in the DTR, and then the system will give you proposals. All right? So please try to understand why you're getting this or why you are not getting that, and analyze, and during this period of time that you are learning, Discuss with your hub support with the subject master experts from New York. Ask us. It's, it's also related to training. If you think it's an issue, you have uh, the TM uh, also Moja support team in Brindisi. But please do not work in the same way when you are doing a purchase order. You, this is a planning tool. It's not a transaction system. The added value of this system is the combination of your intelligence, of your experience with this system. It is not like other modules we implemented before, where you know the system has the business rule, you only click, click, click. All right? Sorry to insist on that, Brian. Over to you. I will let you now <laughs> accept planning if you want. Okay. Very good. Thanks, David. Very important as well. It's a good thing this session is being recorded because I think a lot of key things have been uh, said. So you guys should review this afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to accept planning. Basically, this would be the, the last step in the planning process, right? Let's say that if I select the first one, right? Because I'm, I'm basically going blindly and I'm selecting the first one and I'm not really paying attention to the route that I'm selecting. I didn't realize that I made a mistake at this point, right? I'm selecting the first one. I click on accept planning. Just because you accepted the planning doesn't mean that it's done for, right? You can still go back and do the planning over again. Am I, I'm breaking up? Okay, hopefully you guys are still following fine. If you can just confirm in the chat, if you guys are still there listening to us that I'm coming through. Okay, thanks David. So I accepted the planning and now I see that I have one, two, three, four freight units. 
okay, which are the same freight units that I was looking at before that I'm planning because the system, what it does is it breaks down the freight unit into the amount of stages that we're going to be getting freight orders for. So we have one, two, three, four freight orders, one, two, three, four freight units. So a division of four, okay, equally. Now, I haven't saved this transaction yet. What would be very interesting for you, okay, besides the fact that you can read the locations here, a lot of the times it's very useful to see them. Okay, remember what we were showing you before. So now that I have the four stages and the actual breakdown of the planning that I'm going to select. Okay, I heard a, a voice there. I'm not sure. I'm just going to make sure everyone's muted. All right. And now I would select all the freight units here. I could go back to my updating of my map. I could clear and add selected entries. And when I take a look at the map now, I will see the exact breakdown okay, of the transportation that I'm about to accept, about to save. And maybe when you look at it like this, you say, okay, now this makes more sense because this is actually how we do things normally, right? Or you know what? Maybe we can do this differently this time and optimize the transportation and save on cost. Maybe if we take a different route. But this option will always allow you to have a uh, visibility of the transportation proposal you are about to accept. If you think this is not uh, detailed enough or accurate enough for you, you can also do the map viewing by freight order. Okay, you can select any of the freight orders which represent a specific leg. Let's say maybe uh, the second one, let's, uh, let's select this one. And instead of the map option, we click on the map display. The map display will show you the individual legs, stages or freight orders. Remember, they're all synonyms of each other of the one you're selecting in the cockpit. So you see, sometimes you'll have the zoom is so close that you won't have like an error kind of like view there. See, if I zoom out a little bit, it uh, fixes itself and you have a stage by stage, leg by leg, freight order by freight order, the transportation. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you from where to where it's going and even the means of transportation used. Okay, see, if I change now to my other, let's say the main carriage, it's also going to update below and show you that the transportation. Now, again, it's a straight line, but of course, this would be going by sea. So you have to understand that it wouldn't be going across China in a boat unless we uh, hire a flying boat, okay, which who knows in the future. All right. So here we have our freight orders. We haven't accepted these yet, so we could still select them all and get rid of them if we wanted to. That's an option. Okay, I can just click on the bin and get rid of these freight orders, and then I can just plan again. Now, the thing is, you have to be very careful when you plan again, that if it has been broken down into four different stages, to make sure that all four stages are selected before you plan again. If not, you're telling the system that you only wanna plan stages for this first leg or this second leg. So always make sure you have them all selected and start the process over again. Okay, this time, the second time around, you pay more attention to what David was mentioning before. Are these the correct routes? Are these the correct dates, right? Why am I only receiving air uh, options? Why is this uh, only a day of travel when usually this should be four days? So maybe the date in your inbound delivery document has not been updated. Remember, when you update your inbound, you automatically update your DTR and freight units. So your unloading dates here will also reflect the ones in your inbound delivery document. And that's what you need to pay attention to. And I'm sure that the options will change once you have the accurate data. Okay, so we, instead of selecting the first option, like I was going to do before, maybe this time I want to select my third proposal. You see the third proposal has actually five stages. It may be a bit longer, but it may be cheaper. Or who knows, maybe there's a problem at a port, right? Maybe Algiers port is having an issue, some sort of conflict. Maybe you shouldn't go through this one because you know that if you do, your uh, shipment is going to stay there for an extra month and you need it for sure uh, in a week or in three days. So you're better off using another port. So you see here, you're always selecting Algiers. So maybe we can look for 
an option that doesn't contain that port. If there is or if there isn't, like David said, you could request this location in master data as well. It seems like the ones we have here in the training will all go through the Algiers port. OK, because that's what we have in the training environment master data. All right. But this is just an explanation for you to understand the options of TM. Like David was stressing, and again, I stress it too. This is an analytical tool, so your intelligence also comes into play. It's not all about just clicking and planning, but thinking about what you're doing, reading the information that's displayed, checking and cross-referencing the data that you have here. OK, I'm going to go back to my first option. Again, this is the training environment here, and I'm accepting planning. And this time, I am going to save my options. You'll see that the reference document will change from the dollar sign and the two-digit number to the actual freight order uh, document reference, which starts with 6-1. And here you go. And now these would be planned. Okay, so once you do this, and this is also very important to stress, once you have already planned these freight orders, you shouldn't update the inbound delivery document. Okay, you could always update the inbound delivery document up until the point that you haven't finished planning. If by any chance you have already saved your freight orders, but you, there's an update in the inbound delivery document, right? Something has changed in the delivery dates. You can always select the freight orders or search for them one by one and delete them. Okay, they should always be deleted in a sequence. So always from your final destination all the way to your origin destination. Okay, so here you would go one by one and delete them from the last to the first. Since you have them on screen here, that would probably be your best option is to just get rid of them one by one and perform the planning once again. OK, so make sure that you do this if you have already planned and now there's been a change. You can always go back to your freight orders, delete them and plan again, even though they have been planned. OK, if they haven't been planned, all the changes that are performed in the inbound delivery document will reflect in the DTR and the freight unit and no problem. You go to the cockpit and you plan again. If you have planned, then there's an issue. You need to delete the freight orders and start over again. OK, so basically these are the main things I wanted to cover in terms of planning today for this session. Now, maybe we have three, four minutes for some questions, which I think could be very valuable or any updates you would like to uh, mention, David, if you think we should cover something else. Well, actually, there was a comment from Sasa that uh, yeah, I, I would like uh, to mention. Uh, also, if he wants to jump in as well, so just a point that about the proposal that we are accepting that to remind our audience that this is a planning, this is a plan. It does not mean that eventually it's going to be literally point. I mean, all all the all the locations like that. It would depend also on the uh, let's say freight forwarder, right? That is taking the route. From the planning, if it's included in the SOW as uh, as part of the request, it's okay. But eventually, it could happen that uh, um, that the freight forwarder can go through a particular place, no, and then there is a negotiation, and and then it goes through a different point, and then it can be later updated, right, Brian? And uh, yeah, I think that was an interesting comment. And also wanted to mention that the system. Uh, has a lot of, let's say, tools to fa to facilitate the planning, but it's important for them to check, for example, also the type of goods that they are planning transportation for, right? Because the system will not, uh, let's say, filter out certain proposals. For example, if we are talking about laptops or about blood that uh, shouldn't go by a particular means of transport, uh, I'm not an expert, but I guess it has to go by by year and they might get they they may get proposals by uh, C for example right but instead before accepting the proposal only considering location routes etc also they can see from the freight unit right Brian the type of goods they are they are planning transportation for right or is there in the system like something that will prevent transportation proposal to go by C for these particular goods, maybe there is an update or something. Do you know if the system will generate proposals like generally or will avoid transportation by sea if it's supposed to go by, by air? 
Okay, well, honestly, I don't know if the system is as intelligent as to know if it's going to transport something by sea or by air, if we're transporting blood or something else. I do know, and this was also repeated by Himanshu in the conference in Entebbe, that the system does have a table that will prevent you from combining goods that shouldn't be combined together. Okay, that definitely. So if you're trying to uh, manage the uh, transportation for several freight units that shouldn't be combined together, let's say dangerous goods with something that shouldn't be with those dangerous goods, the system will prevent you from combining those two, that I know. But the fact that the system is intelligent enough, at least so far, to tell you this shouldn't be transported by sea and only offer you air, at that point, I can't say. That's uh, definitely an interesting uh, question, and we'll take note of that one too. But definitely in the combination of freight units, the system is smart enough and has been generated to do that, to avoid you from combining things that shouldn't be combined. No, we can't hear you. Let me unmute you here in the system. If I can manage that. Uh, or if not, keep, uh, if if anything, I think you, they can hear you through my microphone. Okay. Since can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. There you go. Okay, yes. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, what I was mentioning that apart, again, is the same point. Don't do things automatically think about now in this screen where you are preparing the planning you are not seeing basically the goods right brian they don't see there the type of good they are planning transportation for today in the table so so anyway just remember that because you have the system it doesn't mean you don't have to think about business rules so if you're planning for a particular route Remember to go and check what type of goods you are uh, preparing the proposal and do not assume that the system will give you only valid proposals, especially at the beginning. Maybe later they can be an enhancement or, or something. So please uh, remember, remember that. And I think there was a question, but I'm not sure if I can go now and, and see the question without losing one second. I don't, can you see the question, Brian? I think there was a question from, from one colleague. Sure. I'm yeah, taking now, now I see it. So my question is also, I can see the FU is, ah, is free, right? Are not packed. Should I anyway do the planning or ask the inbound coordinator to do the packing before I plan? Okay, so very good observation, uh, Frey. Definitely, these goods are not packed, okay, and you can see that uh, from the icon re under the items, right? If we hover over the icon here, we should we should be able to see, it would be nice to see what's being transported, right, right from this screen here, but we can basically just see the, the product itself. So, very good observation. We shouldn't be planning this freight unit because the items haven't been packed. Now, this is basically because it was a quick last minute setup and I was trying to pack. It did work in ECC, but it didn't transmit into TM. Again, probably an, a training environment issue. And uh, I thought, uh, okay, no one will realize, but uh, thanks Ray, for realizing that because that's exactly what you shouldn't do, right? You shouldn't plan transportation for items that haven't been packed. I was trying to have it reflected in TM, but it wasn't. If we check this inbound delivery document in ECC, it shows as packed, but in the training environment, somehow it's not linking in TM. But definitely this should have the icon of the packing symbol, and that's how we know that these are packed, right? Right now what we have them is the, the goods are kind of separate, and that's what this icon is, is describing. If we have the packing icon, which looks like a box, like a, your sort of your Amazon type of box, then we would know that it's packed and we can move on. So yes, we should go back to the inbound coordinator, and yes, we should tell the inbound coordinator, please perform the packing. What is this Amazon type of box? <laughs> I know I shouldn't have I shouldn't have sold Amazon. I think they, they already have an Brian. <laughs> okay, Brian. yeah. So golden rule from also from Adrian is saying never plan an impact a few. Okay, so that that's important to consider it was a good catch, unless you have to deliver a training, right? <laughs> and the icon is not changing. But um yeah, that is it was a, a good comment. Uh, and Brian, there, there are a couple a of questions from other colleagues, Brian, and and I think if 
there are a couple of questions uh, from two colleagues here. They are more support related, like one person wants to, uh, one of our colleagues wants to delete a PO line, but uh, the system does uh, does not allow. I think for this type of questions, it's better if you send a separate email because it's more support oriented. It's a bit out of the scope of the purpose of the session. And yeah, so for Jamil and Pierre, please send us, drop us an email or go through the through your uh, ramp uh, ramp up hub, and uh, we will address that. Over to you, Brian. Actually, I think Cyril wants to jump in for a second here. Uh, Cyril, can you unmute yourself or do you need me to do it? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, Brian, just to emphasize on the importance of uh, the parking. Why, in fact, the parking is, uh, is important? They have to understand that if you don't do the parking, the system will not prevent you to proceed. But at the level of uh, the SOW, you will not have the correct, you know, uh, dimension, weights, and volume, and you will not be able to do your solicitation properly. That's the only point I wanted to add. All right, Cyril, thank you. I, I know there's uh, tons of things to say in these sessions. I know with one hour, we barely have time to cover all the important aspects of TM, but absolutely, remember, we stress this in the training and we're stressing it here again. Packing is critical because it has a downstream effect, right? Once we have an SOW document that we will have linked to the freight order, that SOW document will have all the contents that have been defined, not only in the shopping cart for goods, in the transportation proposal, but also the packing details, which will affect the overall cost or estimated cost. Again, like Sasha was saying, and I wanted to go back to that point, remember that what we're doing in TM is all estimations, right? We're estimating a route, we're estimating cost, and then we're providing this to a carrier so that they can give us their version of this transportation and also their version of the cost for this transportation. The idea of this is that we're trying to make a system smarter, right? TM will eventually become smarter because this estimated data a year down the road, two years down the road, will be cross-referenced with the actual data that we're eventually as TS02s or TS08s, depending on the scenario, we're gonna be updating the system with. So we'll always have the cross-reference of actual data with the estimated data and make the system smarter. So in the long run, TM will eventually be providing us more and more accurate data in terms of cost and transportation. So, yeah. So that, that's correct, Brian. Also, another comment about about packing. Uh, some of the colleagues are insisting through the chat about the importance of packing. Okay, and as uh, Cyril said, packing is very important to be performed before planning. Otherwise, you don't know if you're planning for a small box or for something that will not fit in a truck. Now, make sure that inbound deliveries uh, uh, have been, or from the inbound delivery, the packing is performed, essentially for. Uh, in terms locations that are non DAP, right? For the case of DAP, since they are, it's the vendor who is sending, you will not have a different, a separate freight order. You will not have, uh, you will not need to perform the plugin for DAP because you don't need to do the planning, right, Brian? But for all the rest of the scenarios, please make sure and also confirm with the vendor. So when, from, confirm from the vendor what are the dimensions, weight, volume, etc. Okay, uh, thank you, David. Thank you, Cyril. Uh, thanks to all the attendees. I know the hour is up. I believe we have to close the session unless there's any last minute question, or comment, reference. We should be good for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Again, we'll start uh, next week with uh, some brand new sessions. Hopefully we've covered the details and we've clarified some of your doubts with this uh, brief session. Thanks again, uh, David, for being there and for the uh, very important uh, clarifications you made. And thank you guys uh, for being there as well on the other side. So have a good rest of the day. And uh, we're here for you also for the rest of the day and throughout ramp up. Thank you. Have a good day and have a good weekend. Have a nice weekend. Muted.